Hello everyone, Dr. Polaris here. The two living genera of sloths have become iconic and familiar animals, due in large part to their round, adorable faces, slow movement and gentle demeanour. Inhabiting the tropical forests of Central and South America, the two-toed sloths of the genus Colopus and the three-toed sloths of the genus Bradypus are remarkably similar in appearance, with both being shaggy-coated arboreal folivores with peg-like teeth lacking in enamel coating. However, the two genera are actually quite distantly related, diverging from a common ancestor roughly 28 million years ago during the Oligocene. Indeed, the similarity between Colopus and Bradypus is a fantastic example of convergent evolution, with both animals descending from substantially larger and more terrestrial ancestors. With only two small arboreal forms present in modern times, sloths of the order Folivora have declined drastically in terms of diversity, with the group once highly widespread and successful across the Americas and the Caribbean. Many of the extinct forms were massive animals, with the famous genus Megatherium reaching the size of an African elephant, while others such as Glossotherium were fossorial digging animals able to produce low-frequency vocalisations. The unusual Thalas Ochnus was a semi-aquatic seagrass grazer that lived along the Pacific coastline of South America, with the closely related Eremotherium colonising North America during the Pliocene. A majority of these large terrestrial forms died out during the late Pleistocene mass extinction at the end of the last ice age, with potential culprits including human hunting and climate change. The basal megalochnid sloths of the Caribbean persisted long into the Holocene, with the genus Megalochnus itself surviving on Cuba and Hispaniola until about 5,000 years ago. Despite this diversity, however, the early evolution of sloths is still poorly understood. The oldest known members of the group appeared during the early Oligocene roughly 32 million years ago, and were already very similar to later forms, suggesting a degree of prior diversification during the Eocene that has not been preserved in the fossil record. Molecular studies have placed sloths as the sister lineage of the anteaters, within a clade called Pilosa, meaning hairy ones. Pilosa likely diverged from its sister group, the armadillos, during the late Paleocene circa 55 million years ago. All of these animals were members of Xanathra, a strange lineage of placental mammals that evolved in South America at the beginning of the Cenozoic. All Xanathrans are united by a range of anatomical traits, including sturdy spines with extra articulation on their vertebral joints, either highly reduced or absent dentition, single colour vision and low metabolic rates. Males also possess internal genitalia, similar to many Afrotherian mammals such as elephants. These features suggest that the first Xenarthrans, as well as the common ancestors of Pilosa, were probably fossorial animals that fed on colonial insects and then later specialised into different niches. With sloths, this entailed a shift towards a more herbivorous diet, although we still don't know what the earliest members of Folivora looked like. Due to their mysterious early origins, the oldest known sloths appear in the fossil record during the early Oligocene. Recent genetic analyses have demonstrated that the most basal known Folivoran group was the family Megalochnidae, Endemic to the Caribbean, and once considered to be close relatives of the modern two-toed sloths, it has been confirmed via collagen analysis that these insular forms diverge from all other sloths close to the Eocene or Ligocene boundary roughly 32 million years ago. Native to the islands of Cuba, Hispaniola and Puerto Rico, these animals ranged greatly in size and ecological niche. At 90 kilograms, or about 200 pounds, Megalochnus was the largest of the Caribbean sloths, being comparable to an Asiatic black bear in terms of size. With unusually rodent-like incisors, this bulky herbivore was the largest terrestrial mammal in its environment and would have faced limited predation. Based on subfossil remains, it is possible that this genus survived until circa 5,000 years ago on Cuba and Hispaniola. A far smaller form, Neocnus, was present in the same ecosystems, but inhabited a very different ecological niche. Only the size of a small domestic cat, this animal was probably capable of climbing trees, but was not as specialised for this lifestyle as modern sloths are. The jaws were powerful and robust, enabling Neocnus to feed on relatively tough vegetation, while the tail was heavy and broad, 
suggesting that this animal could rear up on its hind legs, much as modern tamanduas do. Like Megalochnus and several related taxa, these Caribbean sloths died out as a result of human hunting by the first indigenous peoples of the region. With these slow-moving and relatively modestly sized herbivores being easy prey for spear-wielding hunters. Despite this, Megalochnids were the youngest known lineage of ground sloths, with their island homes providing a degree of protection not afforded to their cousins on the mainland. Outside the Caribbean, the oldest folivorans known from decent fossil material were native to what is now Patagonia during the early Oligocene. A potential late Eocene specimen has been recovered from Antarctica, although this is highly fragmentary and may belong to a more basal pilosan instead. All sloths more derived than the megalochnids can be divided into two broad lineages, with these being the mylodontoids and the megatheroids. The former group contains the living two-toed sloth genus Colopus, as well as two extinct families of large terrestrial forms. One of these were the Scolidotheriids, a family of browsing and grazing forms that persisted from the late Oligocene to the Pleistocene-Holocene boundary about 11,000 years ago. While containing a proposed 12 genera, many of these are quite poorly known, with little information being available online. The genus Scolidotherium itself is one of the better documented forms and was native to much of South America during the Pleistocene. Standing up to 1.1 meters or 3.6 feet tall at the shoulder, this hefty herbivore weighed in at 850 kilograms or about 1,870 pounds and fed on a variety of plant matter. The jaws were unusually elongated for a sloth, making the animal somewhat resemble an anteater in appearance. Its close relative Scalidodon was a specialised grazer and inhabited the temperate plains of Argentina, Chile and Peru. About the size of a domestic cow, this genus may have survived until as recently as 9,000 years ago during the early Holocene. A much better known and closely related family were the Mylodontids, which reached quite substantial sizes. Among the largest of these was the genus Lestodon, that dwelt across South America from the early Pliocene to the end of the Pleistocene. Measuring approximately 4.6 metres, or 15 feet long, from snout to tail tip, it is estimated to have weighed 2.5 tonnes as a mature adult. It was a herbivore, and primarily fed on the grasses on the South American plains, and it is thought to have perhaps used its semi-bipedal stance to obtain foliage from trees. With its blunt and square jaws, this genus was a bulk feeder that utilised its hooked, spade-like claws to dig up and dislodge plant matter. In order to process foodstuffs with a high amount of associated grit and soil, Lestodon possessed Hypsodon high-crowned teeth. A similar, albeit smaller genus was Mylodon, native to Patagonia during the Pleistocene, becoming extinct roughly 10,000 years ago. In Mylodon's case, not only bones and teeth are known, but also various soft tissue and integumentary structures as well. The diet of Mylodon is known in detail due to the presence of fossilised faeces, which suggests that the genus fed on a diet made up almost exclusively of grasses. This is reflective of the proposed open tundra-like environment in which this animal lived. However, a very interesting study published in 2021 has indicated that, based on stable isotope ratios, Mylodon may have been at least sporadically omnivorous. This may have been due to the relatively cold climate inhabited by this animal working against its slow xenarthran metabolism, necessitating the need to embrace a broader diet in order to survive. Surviving mummified patches of skin demonstrate that Mylodon was covered in a thick, shaggy coat of brown fur, in addition to possessing a scattered layer of osteoderms embedded in the skin. During the late Miocene, Mylodontids were among the first sloths to enter North America, arriving long before the height of the Great American Interchange around 2.5 million years ago. An endemic genus, Thinobadistes, was present across the southern United States from Florida to Texas between 10.3 and 4.9 million years ago. A forest-dwelling browser, the ancestors of Thinobadistes presumably arrived in North America by island hopping across the Central American Seaway. Modern sloths are capable swimmers, and it's likely that their extinct relatives were similar in this respect, making such a journey relatively straightforward. Another younger North American mylodontid was the genus Paramylodon, present from the early Pliocene to the late Pleistocene, inhabiting a wide range that stretched from Pennsylvania in the north to Guatemala in the south. Paramylodon, also known as Harlan's ground sloth, 
measured up to 10 feet long and weighed about a tonne. Fossil finds suggest that this genus preferred open grassland and parkland environments. Dwelling alongside Colombian mammoths, the short-faced bear Arctodus and dire wolves. Adults would have been relatively immune to predation, while juveniles were vulnerable to attack by Smilodon fatalis, American lions and homotherium. Like many other members of Mylodon today, this animal died out roughly 11,000 years ago, with evidence pointing largely to a climate-based extinction with fairly minimal human impact. With the demise of the Mylodontids and the Scalidotheriids, the only living members of Mylodontoidea are the modern two-toed sloths, the genus Colopus. Two species are known, with these being Linnaeus's two-toed sloth and Hoffman's two-toed sloth, which diverged approximately 7 million years ago. The genus is native to tropical and montane forests in South America and Central America as far north as Honduras. They could be differentiated from the three-toed sloth in a number of observable traits, including the possession of a more brownish shaggy coat, a longer snout, larger eyes, and a more robust build, and, of course, its two-toed front feet. They often move slowly through the canopy for about eight hours each night, and spend much of the day sleeping in tangles of lianas. They are solitary in the wild, and aside from mothers and their young, it is unusual for two to be found in the same tree at the same time. Two-toed sloths hang from tree branches, suspended by their huge hook-like claws. This clinging behaviour is a reflex action, and sloths are found still hanging from trees after they die. The sloth spends almost its entire life eating, sleeping, mating, and giving birth hanging upside down. Colopus is a surprisingly omnivorous animal, with a diet consisting of leaves, fruit, berries, insects, and even small vertebrates. This is interesting given the proposed omnivorous habits of the closely related Mylodon described earlier. These animals have many predators, including eagles, ocelots, and anacondas, with the sloth defending itself by biting and slashing at the attacker with its sharp claws. However, these shy animals mostly rely on their slow movements and algae-covered fur to hide them from predators. The other major sloth radiation encompassed the megatheroids, relatives of the modern three-toed sloths. A modestly-sized family in this group were the nothrotheriids, which originated in the late Miocene of South America, Many genera are known, but are quite poorly understood, with the best represented form being the North American Nothrotheriops. Often referred to as the Shasta ground sloth, this genus dwelt across Central America and the Southern United States, originating roughly 2.6 million years ago. About the size of an American black bear, measuring about 9 feet long and weighing 550 pounds, this medium-sized ground sloth was among the smaller members of Folivora native to North America. N. chastensis is known from northern California to as far south as Belize and as far east as coastal Florida. In some areas, it appears to have undergone a range contraction and expansion in response to glacial cycles, likely indicating an intolerance to cold temperature extremes. The vast majority of fossil material attributed to this animal has been uncovered from the southwestern United States, with the unspecialized dentition suggesting a generalist low-browsing ecological niche. Remarkably, dry fossilised faeces recovered from sites such as Rampart Cave, Gypsum Cave and Shelter Cave in the southwestern US have preserved sugars, amino acids, pollen, and even fragments of plant cuticles and seed pods. The majority of food items are arid-adapted plants, such as the Joshua tree, catclaw acacia, desert globe mellow, and salt bushes. In fact, Nothrotheriop seems to have been the major seed disperser for the Joshua tree, with the modern reduced range of this plant being blamed on the extinction of its megafaunal partner. As the diet of N. chastensis would imply, this species was arid adapted, more so than any other North American sloth, suggesting a degree of ecological partitioning. Caves appear to have been utilised by this sloth for shelter during colder periods, in addition to providing a safe place to give birth away from potential predators, which would have included dire wolves, Smilodon and the American lion. This genus died out roughly 11,000 years ago, with human hunting proposed as its main cause of extinction. The sister group of the Nothrotheriids were the famous Megatheres, native to both North and South America by the Pleistocene. Known for the massive sizes achieved by later members of this family, 
Megatheriods originated during the late Oligocene, with early forms being relatively small and slender animals. A good example of this was the genus Hapalops, an incredibly widespread and successful low browser that dwelt across most of South America from the early to late Miocene, surviving for over 10 million years. About the size of a small sheep, Hapalops inhabited dry savanna environments and was possibly capable of some degree of climbing due to its modest size. Some potential members of Megatheria Day were adapted to more novel ecological niches. The unusual genus Thalassochnus, the famous semi-aquatic sea sloth, has proved difficult to place within the sloth family tree, with the most recent studies suggesting a Megatheriad identity. Dwelling along the Pacific coastline of South America from the late Miocene to the late Pliocene, Thalassochnus evolved several marine adaptations over the course of four million years, such as dense and heavy bones to counteract buoyancy, the internal nostrils migrating further up the head to help with breathing while submerged, the snout becoming wider and more elongated to consume aquatic plants, and the head angling further and further downwards to aid in bottom feeding. The long tail was probably used for diving and balance. Thanasoclus probably walked along the seafloor and dug up food with its claws. They probably did not swim in a high-powered way, relying on paddling instead if necessary. Early members of the genus were probably generalist grazers, eating seaweed and sea grasses close to the shore, whereas later species specialised on sea grasses further off the coast. It would have been a surreal sight to see these marine sloths lounging on the beaches of Chile and Peru alongside penguins and pinnipeds. Thalassochnus went extinct at the end of the Pliocene due to a cooling trend that followed the closing of the Central American Seaway, which killed off much of the sea grasses of the Pacific South American coast. Other members of Megatheria Day persisted for much longer, including the iconic Megatherium itself. Native to the Pampas and Andean regions of South America, from the early Pliocene to the beginning of the Holocene, the species M. americanum is famous for its massive size, measuring up to 20 feet long and weighing in at an impressive 4 tons, comparable to a modern African bush elephant. It had a robust skeleton with a large pelvic girdle and broad muscular tail. Its large size enabled it to feed at heights unreachable by any other contemporary herbivores. Rising on its powerful hind legs and using its tail to form a tripod, Megatherium could support its massive body weight while using the curved claws on its forelimbs to pull down branches with the choicest leaves. The narrow snout suggests that Megatherium was a selective browser with prehensile lips, able to pick off only the tastiest fruits and leaves. This sloth, like the modern giant anteater, walked on the sides of its feet because its claws prevented it from putting them flat on the ground. Although it was primarily a quadruped, its trackway showed that it was capable of some degree of bipedal locomotion. The sheer size of the animal has prompted speculation about its integument, with some researchers proposing that Megatherium may have been largely hairless, similar to modern megafaunal mammals in Africa and Asia. The genus seems to have preferred temperate, arid and semi-arid environments, in contrast to its close relative Eremotherium, which possessed a more northerly and tropical range. In the south, the giant ground sloth flourished until about 15,500 years ago. Most cite the appearance of an expanding population of human hunters as the cause of its extinction. A kill site dating to around 12,600 years ago is known from Campo Labore in the Pampas in Argentina, where a single individual of M. americanum was slaughtered and butchered. Its relative, Arimotherium, pushed northwards into Central America and the southern United States, inhabiting a very similar niche to Megatherium further to the south. A massive animal and potentially the largest known sloth, the genus Arimotherium lordridii may have weighed in approximately 6 tons. A possibly gregarious animal, this was the largest North American sloth genus by far, being a mixed feeder of shrubs, leaves and grasses. Like Megatherium, this animal died out at the end of the Pleistocene due to a probable combination of climate change and hunting by humans. The final extinct ground sloth lineages were the Megalonychids, a widespread and successful family that originated during the early Oligocene in South America. The diverse members of this group include the small and largely arboreal Diablotherium, native to the Andes in Peru, the Brazilian semi-aquatic Ahitherium, and the large bulky Megalonyx, which successfully colonised much of North America. This 10-foot-long animal weighed in the region of 2,200 pounds 
and possessed the widest range of any ground sloth, extending from Alaska to southern Mexico. Megalonyx was clearly capable of inhabiting many different environments, likely having a fairly flexible herbivorous diet. The latest known representatives of the genus from circa 11,000 years ago inhabited spruce-dominated mixed conifer hardwood habitats. The Firelands megalonic specimen, dated to roughly 13,500 years ago, was likely hunted and butchered by humans in what is now Ohio. Like all other North American sloths, this genus died out at the end of the Pleistocene, probably as a result of the effects of climate change exacerbated by the presence of human hunters. The only living representatives of Megatheroidea are the four species of the three-toed sloth in the genus Bradypus. Native to the tropical forests of Central and South America, these animals can be differentiated from two-toed sloths by their smaller overall size, greyish coats, proportionally smaller eyes and heads. Members of Bradypus are also entirely herbivorous, feeding almost exclusively on leaves. Surprisingly decent swimmers, but practically defenceless when on the ground, Three-toed sloths are vulnerable to a wide range of predators, including eagles, ocelots, jaguars, and humans. Although these animals are classified as being of least concern when it comes to extinction, modern sloths still face habitat loss and destruction due to the burning and logging of their rainforest habitats. Hopefully, these cute fuzzballs can avoid the same fate as their astonishingly diverse giant extinct cousins, with their small size and cryptic habits being their saving grace. Thanks for watching everyone. The next episode will cover the predatory Seabecasusians that were also native to South America during the Cenozoic. See you again soon. Cheerio.